The community gathers at Sina Feituani's funeral to pay tribute to her knowledge of traditional Tongan practices and grieve the loss of her contributions that fed and sustained their village. Sina Feituani was a Finemotua Faangota, a fisherwoman who harvested limu, seaweed, and shellfish from the tidal flats that surrounded her village. The work of Kao Faangota, the gleaners of the sea, those who harvest seaweed and shellfish at low tides, has been historically the work of women. The traditional technique of Faangota is knowledge that women receive from their mothers and pass on to their daughters. Today, the global dominant markets of the U.S., Europe, and Asia demand the commercialization of traditional work and then limits that work to the domain of men. Traditional women's work, like Faangota, then loses its status because, although it keeps a family in a village alive, it is not traded to rich countries for large amounts of profit. The nation of Tonga lies between Fiji and Samoa and northeast of New Zealand. Collecting of plants and animals from tidal flats for both food and medicine is a traditional practice used every day by families who depend on subsistence farming and fishing. This gleaning of the sea remains a vital part of village life for those people that find themselves outside of the developing cash economy. I'm <laughs> 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 As in much of the world, women are bearers of the traditional culture in Tonga. Understanding the plants and animals of the tidal flats is one of the most important lessons that a Tongan woman can pass on to her children. Their knowledge of mat weaving, tapa cloth making, healing the sick, and gathering food are vital to the existence of the family.
ก็ได้มีก็เนี่ยก็เก็บหาว่าเมียกายมูริกิเห็นมูอิเลเลยอ่ะพี่ตัวกายเฮกายเมียตาหิไอริมูก็ได้มีก็อกูหาว่าเ
While the women's contribution to the family diet is essential, men also provide food through farming and the fish they catch in the ocean. They use nets, diving gear, spears, hooks, and lures. In Fangota fishing, women use knives along with their hands and feet. And like the fishermen, they also use their sharp minds and lessons learned from many years of experience. Together, the men and women provide enough to eat for even the poorest of families. As imported foods dominate grocery shops in Tonga, fangota may be perceived as backward and unsophisticated. Nothing, however, could be further from the truth. Fangota draws from a diversity of knowledge. A woman must know animal behavior, weather patterns, tidal cycles, and botany to be successful in fangota. Nei <laughs> Food preparation requires yet another level of sophistication that draws from the collective knowledge of unknown generations of women. There is also a social value to traditional modes of collecting and preparing food as families and neighbors work together in these labor-intensive activities. For women from families with few economic resources and limited access to education, Fangota has provided the means for them to contribute their share to their family's needs. Meliane heats limu bai and coconut milk over the cooking fire. The introduction of curry and onions provides a new twist to a traditional recipe handed down through many generations. The combination makes for a delicious custard. Today, children spend 40 hours a week in schools that are founded on Western pedagogies. This has limited the younger generation's access to vital traditional knowledge that had been taught through intensive one-on-one -on -one training between child and parent. 
Over half the women of Ava'u have formal education, yet fewer than 5% work at jobs that require them to use this education. This has forced many young women to return to their villages in search of traditional learning. Meliane Tupo is one such young woman. Frustrated with Western-style education, Meliane returned to her village at the age of 14. Now under the watchful tutelage of her mother and aunts, Meliane has excelled in Fangota and other traditional activities. She is now one of the main suppliers of food for her family. Unlike their traditional diet of fresh seafood, imported food is high in fat, sugar, salt, and calories. This has created a health crisis in Tonga, as incidences of diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease continue to rise. In a recent year when hurricane damage devastated the environment and economy of Ava'u, many locals no longer had the resources available to purchase imported goods, as a result, consumption of tidal flat foods, such as limu, increased greatly. Western-trained medical professionals have recently discovered several medicinal uses for limu. Medicinal benefits that Tongans have known for thousands of years. Ironically, many of the pharmaceutical applications currently being researched, including diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease, are the same conditions being caused by the new Western diet heavy in imported foods. In spite of the declining interest in limu in Tonga, developed countries like Japan have a multi-million dollar interest in limu from Tonga. During the last decade, with the support of the Tongan government, Sea Star Industries has established the exportation of this seaweed called Limu Tangau to supply the growing Japanese market. Initially, Sea Star purchased Limu Tangau from individuals collecting freely from wild beds. In spite of a government fisheries report recommending that Limu be purchased from women experienced in Fangota, Sea Star hired men to harvest the seaweed. <laughs> The inexperienced men often gathered every stalk of seaweed they could find, regardless of its readiness. This action resulted in waste ratios of up to 70 percent. Since then, Sea Star Industries has developed seaweed farms resulting in more efficient collection of market quality seaweed. Farm employees harvest the full-grown limu and prepare it for export.
Once in Japan, limu is dried, processed, and packaged under the name mozuku.